test out their servers and other things, so having a lot of people playing their beta is very, very good for them, so Polyphony Digital, the developers behind the new Gran Turismo sport game, are very happy and pleased with how the demo, uh, the demo was received when it released. And yeah, I can't wait to play the full game when it comes out. So, uh, the Star Wars Battlefront 2 beta was supposed to end early on this week, but they actually extended it until Wednesday. And after Wednesday, you know, it's uh, completely over now. Uh, you can no longer play the beta. But uh, the beta was mostly met with positive reaction. Uh, DICE released a statement uh, yesterday talking about how they were very pleased with all the fans that downloaded the game or the beta to play the game. And they addressed some issues over concerns regarding the loot box or loot crate system within uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Specifically, a lot of, well, I wouldn't say a lot, but a certain number of players were very concerned at how the loot box system in the game felt like microtransactions in that most of the powerful star cards required you to use real money in order to get them quickly. And DICE basically came out this week to say that uh, the beta was unfinished, like they did not finish the loot box system for the beta, but that the full version of the game that's going to be releasing soon uh, will not have the same mechanics and that you will be able to unlock the most powerful weapons from game progression and you will have to play the game a certain amount of hours and not just spend money in order to buy the most powerful star cards or weapons so that kind of alleviated some concerns people had and you know uh, I was a little bit hesitant about pre-ordering the game just because of how the star cards worked in the beta, but after this, I think I'm going to consider pre-ordering now, since I am a Star Wars fan, and I really want to play this game when it comes out. And Super Mario Odyssey has been receiving a huge advertising push from Nintendo recently. Uh, this week alone, they released, like, two trailers. Uh, the first trailer was basically a beautiful, like, launch trailer of sorts, just showcasing all the worlds and different features in the game. Uh, it looks really nice. I can't wait to play this game. Already fully pre-ordered it. Um, can't wait to play this, and hopefully I get it a few days early, as I usually do with most games. So, uh, it's definitely going to be one of my favorite Nintendo Switch games of the year, I think. Just judging by these trailers and other fan opinions. And secondly, Nintendo released another... Super Mario Odyssey trailer, and this one is, I'd say, less of a trailer showing gameplay, and just more of a fun advertisement, which basically shows uh, Mario dancing with real people to music from the Super Mario Odyssey game. Uh, this has garnered over a million views already on YouTube. I think it was on the number one part of the trending page when it came out. So it's really popular, and yeah, it looks, I think it, it, it did its job very well and attracted a lot of uh, potential new customers with this new trailer. Uh, if you're going to be picking up Super Mario Odyssey and you're hyped for the game too, uh, tell me in the comments below. The Evil Within 2 uh, received a launch trailer this week. Uh, looks really nice. Uh, early impressions so far have been fairly positive. Uh, apparently lots of people that had issues with the previous game are now finding that this new version or this sequel has fixed some of the problems the previous game had. So a lot of, a lot of, uh, 
fans are happy. And yeah, this is definitely a good horror game to pick out for Halloween or maybe for a horror game ma marathon this month or something. Uh, I still need to finish the first Evil Within game, but I might pick up the sequel once I'm done with that one. So Horizon Zero Dawn had DLC announced at uh, E3 this year. And yeah, the DLC has finally received a new trailer. Uh, it's for the Horizon Zero Dawn Frozen Wilds expansion. So this is a DLC expansion. Very, di very different than just a, you know, map pack or a, uh, you know, skin DLC. But this is an actual DLC that adds story and environment, like a, a new environment content to the game. Uh, the trailer looks really nice. Apparently, this Frozen Wilds expansion is going to add, like, new frozen areas completely, you know, encased in, like, ice and snow. And, yeah, if you're a Horizon Zero Dawn fan, you'll probably want to pick this up. Um, I still need to play Horizon Zero Dawn. I've heard great things, but I have not picked up the game yet, since there are so many great games to play this year. Dragon Quest XI is going to be using Unreal Engine on the Nintendo Switch, specifically Unreal Engine 4. And this was previously rumored, but now we have confirmation from the series creator, Yuji Ori. And basically, during in a panel at uh, TGS, I believe, he was asked uh, some questions and he was talking to the audience and he just leaked the information. Uh, not knowing if he could or not, uh, I, I don't think he asked any of the Square Enix higher-ups if he could basically disclose that they are working on the development for the Switch version with Unreal Engine 4, but he gave out this information and a lot of fans are very happy. This just goes to show that the Nintendo Switch is capable of running Unreal Engine 4 and that more third-party developers should try to at least uh, develop games in Unreal Engine 4 because the Unreal Engine 4 development uh, tools and stuff are very easy to port to other systems. So if you use Unreal Engine to create your game on PS4 or Xbox One, it's very easy, or so, or so I've heard, that it's easy to port those versions of the game to other systems if they are still using Unreal Engine 4. So this could potentially mean that in the future, like any game that uses Unreal Engine 4 could be ported to the Switch without any hassles or problems. So hopefully more developers start doing this in the future. And as a Nintendo fan, I'm very happy about this. Suda51 uh, has considered remaking the Killer7 game. Uh, Killer7 is a really unique game by Suda51. It was released on the Nintendo GameCube and on the PlayStation 2, although the PS2 version suffered from some frame rate problems and loading times. But the game is still amazing and as of right now, it's very difficult to play. I believe the GameCube version is expensive, and the PlayStation 2 version is hard to find and does not run well, so it's not necessarily sought after by collectors. And that's it. You can't play it, you can't play it on PC, Xbox, PS3, PS4, or any other system. So he wants to port or release a remastered or enhanced version of this game in the future possibly and I I really hope he does this uh, I want more people to experience Killer7 it's almost like a Quentin Tarantino movie with a cell shaded art style um, if any of you have ever seen Pulp Fiction it's very similar in that kind of tone or style with cell shading, of course, it, it does not have normal uh, graphics. The art style is 
is very unique and yeah very mature storyline um really really good music uh dialogue the story in that game was great so would really like to see that classic ported to modern systems star ocean the last hope uh one of the more infamous star ocean games is yeah, the fourth star ocean game that came out on the xbox 360 and a year later was like ported to the ps3 uh this game is very uh i'd say loved by the fans but hated by newcomers simply because the voice acting in the game is atrocious specifically in english and if you guys want to want to understand why i'm why i'm saying this stuff about the game uh on youtube type in star ocean nappy time nappy time n-a-p-p-y time and there's a really cringe worthy awkward scene in the game where this character lyle uh basically tells the main character that she wants to go to sleep and the voice acting is just really bad and the scene is just awkward and weird uh and that's just one of the weird scenes that that's in the game and you know it's kind of famous now a lot of people like to make fun of that scene but lots of small scenes like that are what kind of caused the game to receive a lot of criticism when it came out now the battle system and the gameplay are great but everything else about the game has a lot of issues like the graphics how the how, how the characters look like and the environments are kind of very bland save points are extremely hard to find and halfway through the game i believe there's like this this segment of cutscenes that lasts for hours and you cannot save or pause the game so essentially once you enter this segment you have to wait until it's over in order to save so some people you know started playing this an hour goes by and they have to save their game and you know you can't exit the game so they had to let it fully finish and it's it's a mess so at least that's what i've heard i actually have not gotten far into the game i did buy it and i sold it because i was not really interested in, in beating it uh i think it had a lot of problems but you know it's maybe time to give the same the game a second try and they are releasing a remastered version for the ps4 now so if you are a star ocean fan or maybe you've never played a star ocean game and you want to try out this remastered ps4 version maybe maybe that's a good idea not not really sure if the fourth game is the best game to start the series on i'd recommend starting with star ocean 2 on the psp or playstation 1 but yeah uh you know i'm always happy about remasters so this is kind of a good thing and yeah that's it for gaming news this week it's kind of a slow news week for game news uh it seems like next week and the week after that the news should pick up once more games start coming out so one big piece of news that came out this week that is not gaming related is that the star wars the last jedi trailer has officially come out and it's awesome i mean this trailer is amazing uh basically we previously got a teaser trailer that did not really show anything about the new movie but this new trailer uh it's so good uh it's going everywhere that i want the movie to go to now it kind of plays some tricks they will show some shots within the movie and then quickly edit another shot in to make it seem like the two shots are somewhat connected and they're not but as far as the trailer goes you know we get to see ray uh john boyega's character um I really hope he has some uh you know new scenes uh, in this movie i felt like halfway through the last movie in force awakens they kind of dropped him off a little bit and focused more on daisy daisy ridley's character ray so hope john boyega gets more some more screen time this time kylo ren
and it looks great. Uh, uh, they, they even show Carrie Fisher in this movie uh, playing Leia, of course. I'm um, not sure how they're going to handle handle all her scenes in the movie since she did pass away a while ago. Um, and they had to film, I think, other scenes separately without her, so hopefully that turns out all right. Uh, we get to see some scenes near the end that tease that Ray could potentially become a bad or, you know, a bad, bad person of some kind, uh, or villain, as you might say. But I think that's all just nonsense that they threw into the trailer to kind of throw people off. Uh, I do not think that Daisy Ridley's character Ray is going to become a Sith or anything like that in the movie. Although, I think that Kylo Ren might try to convince her to join the dark side with him or something. That that has always been uh, something that the villains in the Star Wars movies have done, so he will probably try that with her. But other than that, yeah, the movie looks great. Uh, can't wait to watch it. Uh, I'm going to watch it as soon as I can when it comes out. I'm not sure if I'll go the first day. It's usually full of people and very difficult to get tickets. But, you know, the day after or the day after that, after it launches, I will definitely hit the theater and try to watch the movie. So, well, that's all for this week. I uh, hope you enjoyed this ASMR Gaming News Ramble. Uh, please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Uh, tell me what you thought in the comments, what piece of news which was your favorite, and... Follow me on Twitter at ASMR Gaming News and on Vidme, that's vid.me slash ASMR Gaming. And yeah, I will see you all next time.